Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Brontaxamab vedotin has an emerging role in the treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma. We know that it's active in the salvage setting for patients who have either relapsed after an autologous stem cell transplant or who have had a couple of lines of therapy and are not eligible for transplantation. And those are two well-established indications for the drug. So Brentasma Vidodin is an antibody drug conjugate that has three different components on it. One component is an antibody to CD30. CD30 is expressed on the surface of Hodgkin lymphoma cells. Uh, so that's why this antibody to CD30 allows Brentasma to selectively target Hodgkin lymphoma cells. The second part of Brentasma Vidodin is a cytotoxin molecule, MMAE, or monomethyl orosostatin E. It's an antimicrotubule agent. Now that part and the antibody are linked together by a, uh, by a linker that's cleavable in the cell. So what, how this drug works is that the whole conjugate binds to CD30, which is on a surface heart lymphoma cell, and then gets internalized. And then the lysosomal enzyme dissolves the linker. Then the MMAE is released, and it can attack the microtubule network, causing cell cycle arrest and apoptosis. First of all, there's the question of whether the drug could be used as a maintenance drug uh, in poorest patients who have undergone autologous stem cell transplantation, where we know that they are at increased risk of relapse following their transplant. And that's been the subject of uh, a large randomized study uh, known as the Athera study. The second concept is, can we introduce this drug into the first line treatment of Hodgkin lymphoma? When you have a drug that has such a high response rate as single agent in multiply relapsed patients, we're talking about patients who failed ABVD and ice and platinum and autologous transplant, the, the, the common sense is then to combine it with other active agents, not only in the relapse setting, but also to move it uh, up front in the frontline setting and pre-transplant setting. And that's what's happening right now, and then, but these are trials ongoing, very promising early results but you know, we want to wait until some of the randomized trials mature and provide data before the standard of care changes. So there are now clinical trials comparing brentuximab vedotin with frontline therapy versus the standard ABVD. There are trials combining brentuximab vedotin with ice chemotherapy in sequential manner, brentuximab vedotin with bendamustine before transplant, transplant followed by Brentuximab vedotin in adjuvant setting and so forth. So the, the field is changing really quickly by these uh, ongoing uh, combination strategies. A new patient with Hodgkin lymphoma, their standard care would be six cycles ABVD. So because Brentuximab vedotin is so powerful with minimal side effect, researchers have tried to add the Brentuximab vedotin to ABVD to see if we can increase the kill rate in that setting. They found that when you add ABVD to brentasmal vedotin, it potentiates the toxicity of the B in ABVD, the bleomycin. Patients have extra lung toxicities. Because of that, the study that's moving forward, they're comparing brentasmal vedotin plus AVD, which is the ABVD without the bleomycin part, against the traditional setting of ABVD. So that's a huge international trial requiring 1,000 patients. And so far the trial, I believe, has about halfway done. And the results of that trial which tell us whether or not Brentasma vedotin would be indicated for first-line treatment. So that's, that's the use of Brentasma vedotin in the upfront setting. The other studies that have been conducted um, um, have been small and have very early results. There's one in particularly interesting study, I think, which has given patients with early stage Hodgkin lymphoma two cycles of brentuximab vedotin prior to receiving any chemotherapy. Th those patients then go on to receive a standard chemotherapy regimen. What's been interesting is that in a very small study reported at ASCO in 2014, of 12 patients treated in that way with two cycles of brentuximab vedotin only, 
uh, 11 of those 12 patients had a response. And it's intriguing to think that this might be the first step towards chemotherapy-free treatments of early-stage Hodgkin lymphoma at some point in the future.